All right, happy Monday to you. I am Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. It's that time of the afternoon. Time for your tropical update. What's brewing? What's cooking out in the tropics? And we do have some development. So guess what? I'm going to get right to it. We have a new tropical storm. Lisa developed this morning and Lisa looking more impressive churning out there in the Central Caribbean. So this could pose a problem to some folks, likely not us, but for some folks across Central America, maybe eventually parts of Mexico. Mexico, Lisa could have some impacts. So right now, Lisa is, as I mentioned, in the central part of the Caribbean. This is Jamaica here, so mainly south of Jamaica. We do have a tropical storm watch out for much of Jamaica, but Lisa will pass to the south of Jamaica. But you can see that this area of showers and storms, this area of low pressure developing, starting to get a little more impressive looking more well defined. We don't see a clear eye developing just yet, but that will likely be the next thing that we could start to see develop with this system. So we are monitoring this closely, but right now it does appear that Lisa is getting a little bit more organized. At this point, as of the latest advisory, maximum sustained winds are still at 45 miles per hour, and this is the 4 p.m. advisory. The location 15.5 degrees north, 78.4 degrees west. Movement to the west at 14 miles per hour. So that is good news for those of you that maybe have some family, friends in Jamaica. Maybe you're planning a trip to Jamaica. It looks like Lisa will stay south of Jamaica and it is pushing tracking off to the west. Pressure at this point, 1,002 millibars, but as the wind speeds are expected to go up, that pressure will likely go down because pressure has a direct correspondence with the wind speed. Lower pressures usually equals higher wind speed. So this is already passed by San Juan, Puerto Rico and other portions of Puerto Rico. It's already passed by Haiti. The Dominican Republic It's going to pass well to the south of Cuba. But let's check out some of the areas in the path. And that will be a big chunk of Central America where we just now have some tropical storm warnings and hurricane watches that have been posted for portions of the coast of Belize and Honduras because Lisa will kind of skirt across portions of Honduras and likely make landfall across portions of Belize as we go into Wednesday afternoon and evening. So let me track this for you at this point just south of Jamaica, but by Tuesday afternoon around 1 p.m. It should be a 60 mile per hour tropical storm and it will be getting closer to Central America. Then it's going to continue on its track to the west, maybe jogging a little to the west northwest. And by 1 p.m. Wednesday, 75 mile per hour winds anticipated that would make it a minimal category one hurricane. Then as we go into Thursday, it's going to weaken to a 35 miles per hour system because it's going to make landfall likely Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday evening. Now the bad news with this, that's when it's expected to become that minimal hurricane with 75 mile per hour wind. So we are going to have that potential for a hurricane making landfall likely around the coast of Belize Wednesday evening and then rapidly weakening as it pushes across portions of Central America and then eventually pushing into parts of Mexico. So we do have the potential for some heavy rain here, maybe some mudslides, some flooding, several inches of rain expected, and there could be some damaging storm surge as well. So we are going to have to monitor all of that wind damage, storm surge threat and also that flooding potential as Lisa heads towards Central America. Now notice Lisa staying south of the Gulf of Mexico, so that is good news. So we're not expecting any major trouble from Lisa here. Of course, if that track changes at all, we will let you know. Even after Lisa makes landfall, it will likely push into portions of Mexico, but it should stay south of us, so I'm not expecting any big impacts. I'm also tracking another disturbance. This one, much weaker, much lower chance that it's going to develop into anything. This is a disturbance about 300 miles off to the north and northeast of Bermuda. Only a 10% chance for development over the next 48 hours and a 10% shot for development over the next five days. Now this disturbance is basically attached to a cold front and there's a tiny chance we could have some subtropical or tropical development, but the window for that happening is pretty slim. So I'm not expecting any major problems. So here's that disturbance right here. It's off to the east of the northeastern US and it's probably not going to do a whole lot. Now, speaking of Lisa, of course, Lisa is a tropical storm and could do quite a bit across Central America. And the reason is we've got plenty of warm water still left out in the Caribbean. Water temps, sea surface temps still in the 80s. So that is very warm, very deep water, water that will help to fuel tropical storm Lisa and eventually 
possibly hurricane. Lisa, it is forecast to become a minimal category one hurricane by the middle of the week. So we've made it down the list. We're using Lisa now. The next storm name on the list, if we have to go that far, would be Martin, then Nicole, Owen, Paula, and Richard. But we're hoping things simmer down before we get that far. Let's kind of do a recap of what we have had so far this season. 12 named storms, five hurricanes, two major hurricanes, but we normally have 14 named storms, seven hurricanes, and three major hurricanes. That's an average season, and that average was taken from 1991 to 2020. So even though it's been a pretty busy, pretty active season, and we've had two horrible hurricanes to wreak a lot of havoc, it's still a little below the norm, and we are going to be dealing with at least a small chance for a few more systems developing before the end of hurricane season. We are just about to November. November, of course, the final month of hurricane season. Hurricane season ends November 30th, and historically, the chance for any tropical cyclones in November, much, much lower. So that is good news for us, but of course, we are always keeping track of what's happening out there, and if anything is heading close to us or developing, you will be the first to know. So make sure that you have the Fox 26 weather app downloaded on your phone or your tablet. A wonderful tool to have. You can track that radar anywhere you are. You can get all your alerts, your advisories, your watches, your warnings, more on what's happening in the tropics. Just a great tool to have. You don't want to leave home without it. Just like you don't want to leave your phone, you don't want to leave that Fox 26 weather app. Also, you can check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Ramesha Shade TV, at Ramesha Shade Weather on Facebook, and at Ramesha Shade on Instagram. I actually just posted a little Halloween World Series video on there, a little dance, a little forecast. You can check that out. So I hope you have a great evening. Stay safe out there and enjoy your night.